I am absolutely excited and thrilled to see what God is doing in the life of our church and also in each and every single person's life. I don't know about you, this morning I came with an expectant heart and I believe that during the time of worship, God just shifted something in our hearts this morning. Amen? And it's amazing because I can really sense there was a shift in the atmosphere when we come together in worship and the healings can happen. We don't have to wait for somebody to come and lay hands on you uh, so that you can be healed even when you are worshiping God without you knowing you you can be healed. Amen. And I believe that God is taking uh, you know, us to the next level. And I appreciate the worship team, for, worship team for being sincere and faithful in serving God. Why don't you appreciate the worship team uh, for doing what they're doing? We are blessed. Turn to the person next to you and tell them, you are blessed. Why, why aren't you so excited when you say that? You're like, you're blessed. <laughs> Turn to the person next to you again and tell them, so am I. So am I. So am I. <laughs> Great. How many of you own your own vehicles here? Like a bike or a car that you need to put petrol for? Few hands, few hands. Yes, yes. Uh, don't worry about the cycle this morning, guys. It's all right. Just, just, okay, the, the ones who are using any kind of automobile, vehicles, bike, car, jet planes, whatever that is convenient for you, um, you know, uh, when, do you, when do you fill your tanks? Do you wait until, how many of you are like, when you see when it's half tank, how many of you do you fill when it's half tank? Half tank, okay, Vinny, it's just Vinny, half tank, okay, how many of you fill when it's like close to empty, when it's just like two points above empty. Yeah, two points above empty, that's most of us. How many of you wait until the needle just comes to E? Yeah, yeah, that's my people, that's my people. That's right. And how many of you wait to see how far the bike can still go after empty? Yeah, there we go. That's the real one. That's the real deal. Because our God is a God of miracles. Uh, and every day we want to see miracle happening. And we keep pushing the bike even after it says empty. And we say, oh man, I want to see. You know, that happens in my life. And when I'm, whenever I have the car, you know, it says it comes to E. And I'm like, oh, it's just E. <laughs> and then the yellow light comes on. And I'm like, it's not blinking yet. And then it starts blinking. And I'm like, the car is still going anyway. <laughs> this morning, I want, to, I want to talk to you guys on a title called Full Tank. Full Tank. We all run empty in our lives at times. But we show ourselves on the outside, it's full tank. You take a beautiful car and only the driver knows you're running short on fuel, but you can look at the car from the outside and it still looks nice. You look at that car and go, wow, what a nice car, it's incredible. But, but it's about to be empty, it's about to stop. It's about to stop what it, you know, it's about to stop to do what it's created for because it's not filled. But still on the outside, it looks so cool. It looks so nice. And you never get to see the tank. Everything looks so nice in our life. In our life, oh, she's looking so good. She, you know, he's doing so well. Look at the way he sings. Look at the way he is dancing for the Lord. Look at the way he's going for this. And look at the way he's successful in life. But a lot of times, we don't know how full their tank is. You don't know for, you could, you could just like throw yourself out, make yourself look so good outside. But only you know how full your tank is. Am I talking to somebody here this morning? Only I know how full my tank is. I could come out here every Sunday after Sunday thinking that, making you believe that, oh, he's probably the most spiritual guy. He's like, you know, in, for 55 hours of prayer in the presence of God, not even eating one day. And, you know, he's just preparing for the word of God. But only I know how full my tank is. Have you ever felt drained in life? Has anybody felt like, man, I'm doing so much, I just feel drained. 
Yeah? Have you ever felt like, you know, I'm just giving out so much, giving out so much, giving out so much spiritually, emotionally, physically, relationally, financially? Have you ever felt like, oh, it's so tiring to keep up? Sometimes some relationships are draining. It sucks the life out of you. You know, you got to, because you're fighting so hard to keep up that relationship. They are so dear to you, they are so close to you, but yet they don't understand you. And you are kind of like, you have to chew, even when it's better. Uh, you know, it's bitter. And, and you can't swallow it because it's bitter. And you don't want to spit it out either because they're close to you. Has, does anybody understand where, what I'm saying? Yeah? Because, because it's draining. It's draining. I want to go through like, uh, you know, 10 reasons why we run on empty. And this is not just a comparison um, between, uh, uh, you know, how we fill our automobiles or vehicles. But this is how we do. There's a, there's a parallel between both. Because the mindset is the, is the same. The mindset is the same. Whatever we do practically in our lives, we do the same for our own life. And the mindset is the same. So I want to draw some parallels. I want to draw 10 reasons why we run on empty. Here's number one. Number one, we don't start full in the first place. We don't start in a better place in the first place. How you start your day sets your day. We feel drained during the day. We feel like I cannot face it. But hey, how did you start the day? Were you rushing out of the door? Not having time to pray, not having time to worship God, not having time to do any of it. And you're just rushing out of the door, but then you on the way, you're just praying a simple prayer. Lord, you know, you understand my heart. Today I did not have time for you, but you are the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. You created the sun, you created the moon, and you created me, and you shall be with me today. How long are we going to keep doing this? And it's draining our life. We are not realizing we are running on empty. But then we are expecting God to break through. We are expecting God to do some things. But we don't see them happening because we are running on empty. You can put on a show, but God knows what is on the inside. Can I hear an amen? amen. The second reason, we are too busy to pause and refuel. Life is taking us in a way that we are just too busy to pause. When you're driving, you know, you, you can see from your gauges that your vehicle is going to be empty. But then you're like, oh man, I, I'll just keep it today. I'm too busy to stop and refuel. I don't have time to refuel. And a lot of times God is calling you to stop. God is telling you to stop and refuel. Come to my presence. It is time to stop and refuel, but then we are ignoring it. And here is number three. We are unaware of the hidden leaks. We are unaware of the hidden leaks. If there is a hole in your tank, no matter how much you fill it, you're going to lose it all. A lot of times we are unaware where we are leaking, where we, what is draining us. You are singing so much, you are praying so much, you are worshipping God so much, you are doing so many things for God. But then there are certain relationships in your life that is not supposed to be there, is draining the presence of God out of your life. The responsibilities that you have, you are so focused in the responsibility, you don't even know that you are actually losing God's presence out of your life. We got to be aware of the hidden leaks in your life. What is it that I am allowing for my tank to go empty? Whenever I'm in church, whenever I'm in the presence of God, ah, oh, Pastor, I, f I feel it. It's great. But then when I go out, is your God of Sunday God of your Monday too? That's the question. Is your God of Sunday your God of Tuesday as well? What are you giving into on the other days of the week? What is it that you are allowing to happen 
that is taking, you know, the presence of God away from you little by little. Is this helping somebody here? And number four, fourth reason, you ignore and you keep going. One of the reasons we run empty is because we ignore it and we keep going and we want to push to see how far we can go. We want to push to see how far we can go. And there are times when we know that we need to stop, but we don't stop. God was giving me warning signs that I need to stop and rest. A lot of times in a marriage, your, your gauges, your warning signs is your wife. She tells you, you are running low. Physically, you are draining. You need to slow down. Last week, there was a pastor who was talking to me and said, hey, are you okay? I think you need to slow down a bit. He asked me this question, when do you take a day off? I said, <laughs> I don't even remember the last time I took a day off. Especially in India, this whole day off thing doesn't work. Probably in your country, it works. In, in other countries, when they say, oh, pastor's on day off, it means, ah, don't disturb him. In India, oh, pastor's on day off, then he, not, he must be not doing anything. Let's go see him. Today he is free, definitely, because it's this day of, I want to speak to him. So I, I'm just always leave myself into something. And then my wife was also like, she was telling me yesterday, you know, like, I was praying for you to God that you will take a day off. You will just stop. And then the Lord made me stop. You know, for the last two days, I, I did not leave the house you know, physically I got so draining that even on dawn prayer in the morning, I was about to pass out while I was talking. I did not even remember the last 30 seconds while I was speaking to people. I was like, what did I even tell them? So I had to go out, take a break, and then come back in, and then, uh, you know, continue. Okay, what I was trying to say was, and then I had to finish it. And your body is telling you, stop. Take a pause. And a lot of times emotionally, physically, financially, we got to understand some warning signs that God allows in your life. And there are some warning signs that he gives you and we will give more deep, we'll go more deep into that. But if we ignore it and if we keep going, then it's not going to be healthy for us. And, and the fifth one, 10 reasons why we run empty. Fifth reason. We are just always in a rush. Hurry. We are always in a rush. The speed of life is just drawing us so fast that we are always in the run to keep up with things. We are always in the run to keep up with things. I always say this, you know, uh, sometimes I run the schedule, sometimes the schedule runs me. But it's a fine line between how you manage your life and how you decide to do when you do what you have to do. And you either let others drive you and you're always catching up or you take control and say, I'm going to have a discipline and I'm going to stick to my yeses and I'm going to stick to my no. If you don't learn to say no, then it's not going to happen. Because we kind of at times we are like, oh, I want to say yes to everything because I'm so nice. I'm a nice person. I can't say no. What will they think of me? But then you are draining yourself. You're draining yourself. When you go on a flight, they give you this, um, you know, uh, warnings uh, and some instructions before you uh, take off. And I always wondered why they say this because they talk about these, you know, if there's a low pressure in the cabin, the masks will come out. And they always say that, you know, put the mask for yourself and then you help your ch child who's sitting or any person that is sitting next to you. First, you take care of yourself before you help the person next to you. And I always thought to myself, shouldn't we be selfless in even if I die? Shouldn't I be helping the person next to me? So I spoke to one of these uh, air hostess and I asked her, you know, what is the deal with that? You know, why do they always say, and they say that the cabin pressure can go, sometimes go so low, so fast, that if you don't help yourself, you cannot help the person next to you. 
So when you put the mask, you are revived and it will take another 30 seconds. Even the person who's next to you is passed out. If you, you can revive them back within one minute. They say it's 30 to 60 seconds. One minute you can revive them back as long as you take care of yourself and then put the mask on them. You can revive them back. But if you don't do both, you're gone. I say, ah, that makes sense. And a lot of times you want to help others, you want to keep going, you want to keep doing stuff. But if you don't revive yourself, if you don't get yourself right, there's no point you wearing things for other people. And you're running on empty doing that. And it's not a healthy place. Amen. Are you with me, church? Sixth reason why you're um, you know, running on an empty tank is... We are distracted and we miss the warnings. Sometimes God is warning us that we are running on empty. But we are so distracted that we don't see the warning signs. These are some of the things that you are distracted from. If you see these warning signs in your life, you got to stop and you got to check yourself if you are running on empty or if you're running on, uh, on full. Number one. If you're not sleeping properly, physically, first of all, if you're not sleeping well, that is not a good sign. Okay? That is not a good sign. You are stressed, you are overwhelmed, and if you're not sleeping well, it is not a good sign. You need to see what is, what is going on. And if you're not sleeping well, purposely, because you are doing something in the night when you're supposed to be sleeping, you're like constantly on your phone, trying to watch a movie, trying to play games or talk to people overnight. You're putting yourself through, you're, you're basically saying, I'm going to put a hole in my tank. And I believe that nobody here wants to do that. Amen? 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 I believe, I believe nobody wants to put a purposely a hole in your tank. And this is what you're doing physically and emotionally to yourself. When you don't look after yourself, when you don't do things that you have to do at the right time and at the right place, then you're putting a hole in your own life. Money. When you're constantly running out of money, even when you have enough, that's not a good sign. If you don't have something left when you have 5,000, because you're always thinking, oh, if the moment I get 10,000, I'm going to be fine. But w only when you get to 10,000 K, you know, 10 K, you come to realize still you're short of money. Then you say, oh, the moment I get to 25 K, I'm going to be fine. Then the moment I get to 50 K, no, no, no. It's a principle. Whether you have 5, 10, 15, 25, or 50, if you don't know how to manage your money and you're constantly draining your money, no matter how much you have, you will always be empty. See, God is a God of miracles. I know that. But then he is not a God of stupidity. Yeah, it's okay. Nobody have to say amen, but that's the truth. He's not a God of stupidity. He has given us wisdom, he has given us his word, and he says that his spirit will lead us and guide us. And if we are not going to take care of our finances, and we are going to constantly run out of money, we got to be, we got to stop and, you know, find out what are we doing? What am I doing? Where is my money going? Amen? Then health, emotionally. If you find yourself irritated a lot of times, you're running on empty. If your mood is like, Arr! small things, just like tiny little things, but you get so irritated so quickly, it means you're running on empty. Whether it be it your marriage, whether it be it leading a team at your workplace, whether it be in church, wherever you are, whether even it's with your parents or family members, if you are just emotionally getting irritated all the time, the problem is not anybody else. The problem is you. Okay, no amen, it's fine. 
That's the truth. People are saying, this sermon started really nice. All of a sudden, yeah, conviction is painful. But hey, it will help you. It will help you. Because for the slightest of things, if we are going to be irritated, and we're going to take it out on people around us, and then we miss the big picture. We miss the big picture. I've seen young people and even adults who are irritated for the silliest of matters. And, and, and there used to be days when we were praying and starving for food and, and the Lord answered our prayers and build, build our lives up. And now 20 years later, we are so irritated because there's not enough salt in the food. That's a big problem. It's a big problem now. It used to be days when we used to pray for, Lord, please provide. And you were like so, you know, uh, that time heart was full. Full in faith, full in trusting God, full in relying on God. But then self-sufficiency can remove God out of your life at times if you don't learn to handle how to be sufficient and how to run full on faith also at the same time. At the same time. Because you cannot worship self-sufficiency. God will provide, God will you know, bless you and yes, He wants you to be sufficient but then don't measure God through your self-sufficiency. I have everything. What more do I need from God now? That is an idol. Hello? That is an idol. And we cannot worship God through that. We cannot serve God through that. Don't be distracted. And the seventh thing is overload. You're constantly overloaded by the burdens of your life. You are just overloaded by the things that you're thinking. And there is a constant, constant overload in your life. And the eighth one is, the eighth reason is pressure to do it now. The world puts a constant pressure to do it now. And because of that, you make rapid decisions in life. You make quick decisions in life and you don't even think about the decisions you're making. Because of that, we lose certain things. We lose certain people. And the ninth reason why we don't understand why we are running on empty is sometimes pride. Pride is the biggest thing that can blind you. you the moment you think, I'm fine, I don't need help, that's pride. The moment you think that, you know, I can look after myself, that's pride. And the last reason why we run on empty is we don't have a plan to fix ourselves. We don't have a plan to understand why we run on empty and what we need to do in order to fix ourselves. And this morning, I just want you to give just three things, just three things very quickly. And I think this is going to help our lives to keep our tank full. Are you ready? Here's this number one. This is, you won't get this anywhere. This is very important. It's a secret. Okay? And I want you to write this down. Are you ready for it? Here's the first thing you've got to do. It's very complicated. Probably you will never have heard this ever before. But I want you to write this down, okay? Are you ready for it? Go to Jesus. Go to Jesus. Sometimes the answer is so simple. And what we need to do is so simple. We saw 10 reasons why we're running on empty. And it sounds so complicated. It sounds like, man, how am I going how, how to fix this? But it's very simple. Go to Jesus. Go to Jesus. Matthew 11 verse 28. This is what he says. Come to me all who are weary. In other words, all who are tired and heavily burdened. And that's most of us here. We are tired running on empty. We are tired with our burdens. We are tired with our responsibilities. We are tired with running after, you know, keeping up with the competition and, to, and, and the decisions that we have to make and the expectations from this world. And we are just tired of those things. And the Lord says, I will give you rest. 
you are tired of religious rituals aren't you tired of just putting up and showing off that you are actually spiritually keeping it well when you know that you are not aren't you tired of it hello how long are we going to keep doing it when we come to a place of acceptance that i need to go to jesus amen we need to give it a rest and we need to refresh our souls you cannot be full tank through your religious practices and spiritual activities like i always say spirituality is different from spiritual activities you can come to church every day of the week you can be you know punctual and doing all sorts of things you know doing the acti- active part of spirituality but you can still be far away from god do you know how because you don't stay in the presence of god because the presence of god is not so much about doing it is so much about just being amen that is why the bible says be still and know that i am god it says be still in other words stop man you cannot find me you cannot understand me through the things that you do for me first understand me so that you can do things for me amen you know that's how it works in a marriage without understanding my wife it will not make any sense for whatever that i do for her she could say i hate bananas she could say i hate apples but i did not have time to sit and listen to the things that she did not like so i go out i am so focused on i'm going to impress my wife i am not ready to spend time with her or sit and listen to her but i want to do things for her i want to just impress her so much so i go out and i buy bananas and apples for her be still and know that i am god this is what this is the problem a lot of times yes we have to be active for god i am not we we are an active church we do a lot of things but not at the expense of running empty a lot of times in our ministry team i say this to our, our, our guys and say hey if you ever need a break and only you know it just come and talk to me about it we immediately release them from from whatever they are doing so that they can just take a break refresh and refuel before they can serve again because we can't keep running we can't keep running on empty we can't give uh, you know um keep giving to people when we are on empty amen so we got to we got to fill ourselves and we need to be refreshed in the presence of god turn to the person next to you and look at them and tell them you need rest you need rest and i don't know how rest is defined to you in my case you know when i'm resting i i can't i can't if i'm i can't just like stop um you know doing nothing when i'm like my sort of resting is like i'm always finding myself to do something and i'm still relaxed but at times when i'm completely knocked out my sort of resting is like eat sleep eat again and just sleep and me and my sleeping buddy zayn yada elis we did that for the past two days and it was so good because i was running short on sleep i slept only very few hours for the past couple of months and i was running short on sleep and it's like my body telling me stop sleep and this is physically but then emotionally you're drained emotionally you're drained you're hurt and you don't even have time to fix your hurt because you're so busy doing things the question is for what and for who if because <laughs> here's the best part guys jesus always said love your neighbor and he did not stop there love your neighbor as you what as you when was the last time you loved yourself it's a serious question 
When was the last time you loved yourself? When was the last time you looked after yourself? When was the last time you just spent, I, I'm not teaching selfishness here. I'm teaching to look after yourself and the only way you can look after yourself is by being in the presence of God. When was the last time you had a, such a deep prayer time that you even forgot to eat? That's fasting. You went so deep in the presence of God. Don't do that like, oh man, pastor, you know what? That's a great idea. My semester exams are coming up. I want to go so deep in the presence of God. I want to even forget that I had an exam to write. I'm talking about fulfilling your responsibilities. At the same time, receiving from God. A lot of times, this is so active. I need to finish this, that project, this project, this ministry, that outreach. So much about it that we don't even meet God. And God is like, you're doing this all for me, but we've never met, dude. We've never met, a, met each other. But then you're claiming, it's all for you, Jesus. My life, it's all for you. Lord, I give you my heart. I give you my soul. And God is like, uh, who are you? When did we last meet? When did we talk? When did we spend time together? Go to Jesus. That's why the only way you can rest your soul, rest your heart, rest your mind emotionally, put things in perspective, is when you go to the presence of God. Amen? Receive the perspective from God before you talk to any man about it. Before you talk to any person. Hey, what do you think about it? Who cares? What does God think about it? What does God think about it? You can get perspective of men and women and all those things, but then beyond those perspectives, yes, people are there to advise you and help you. That's great. One thing that I'm intentionally doing now when uh, people come and talk to me and ask for help and I ask this question intentionally, have you prayed about this first? And the reason we ask this is because you've got to take things to God first before you take it to any man, even if it's a pastor or a prophet. It doesn't matter. Hello? we got to take it to God. Take it to God. Get His wisdom. Get His perspective on it. And the second thing that you need to do in order for you to run on full is give up control. Give up control. The moment you want to control things, the moment you feel that you are in control and you want to take up the wheel, then you are in charge. The question that I want to ask you is, did you start the life that you lived, that you're living right now? Did you decide yourself like, okay, on March 26th, I am going to enter the world. Hmm, who shall I pick to be my parents? Hmm, they seem to be okay. Uh, maybe not. If we all had this choice, we would all have ended up in America. America didn't even exist then. You understand? We did not pick this life. Have you ever decided like, okay, on 20th of February, I shall, on this year, 2070, I shall exit this world. Has anybody made that decision? So did you decide when you shall enter and when, she, uh, when you shall exit? So what are you in charge for? When you don't have the control of something that you didn't start and something that you don't know when it's going to end, why are we fighting so hard to be in charge and to be in control of our lives? We got to just give it up to God. Give it up to God. 1 Corinthians 1 9, it says, God is faithful. God is reliable, trustworthy, and ever true to his promise. 
he can be depended on and through him you were called into fellowship with his son jesus christ our lord friends we need to be in partnership with god and not just use him whenever we need him and by partnership with god is you give him the full control and we just rest in the fact knowing that he's in control amen you just rest in the fact that he's in control it's funny at times um you know my parents whenever they're going on a long drive and if they need help they they'll ask me like hey do you want to come and help us with the driving you know it'll be nice to just go and and we can i can help you i mean uh, you can help us i said yeah sure so i start driving and this is years back my mom doesn't do that anymore um you know she every time i'm driving uh, she's like sitting in the back and and she's like oh slow 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 i'm like what what happened there is a car coming there i'm like okay and then i'm about to overtake and she's like quick 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 go quickly oh okay okay break 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 so one day i decided to just stop the car and i looked at my mom if you can drive why did you call me to drive you could have just driven no i'm just helping you it is not helping <laughs> show me your car license mummy i don't have one <laughs> do you know how to drive a car no i don't but i know where the dangers are and you are my son and you need to be protected and i'm like i'm driving a car and the truck is quite far it's not even close yet it feels close So I told her if you want me to come to drive for you you just got to stop being this back seat driver. And that was the last time I drove for my parents. No, I'm just kidding. I still do. And this is what we do. We are the back seat drivers of our life. Lord, come and have your way in my life like never before. I want to see the move of God in my life. And then when something is about to come, okay Lord, Lord, here I have an idea. I think we have to try this God. And then you go about and do your own thing. And God is like, "Why did you invite me? Why do you need me? When you know the best for yourself." Lord, come and have your way in my life then we take up the phone and dial so what do you think of this do you think i should do this and god is like what i thought i was driving how embarrassing would you feel embarrassed if somebody did that to you and this is this is this is god who who actually planned your life even before you even opened your eyes he has the entire design and whatever you do is in his presence because everything you can't run away from him because he's there everywhere and we try to outsmart him at times and we got to understand we need to give up control the, the more you keep taking control over your life you become more anxious you become more anticipated about what is about to happen and you got to just give up in control but then don't just give up control and not do anything you understand okay i don't need to take control i'm just going to sleep you got to do your part but then you got to do your part in partnership with god amen in partnership with god in the presence of god knowing that he is in control and the last thing is galatians 5:25 and verse uh, this is what we got to do the last thing is we got to be filled by the spirit and led by the spirit we got to be filled by the spirit if we need to run on full tank we got to be filled by the spirit 
and led by the Spirit. Galatians 5.25 it says, If we claim to live by the Holy Spirit, we must also walk by the Spirit. With personal integrity, godly character and moral courage, our, con our conduct empowered by the Holy Spirit. Amen? We should be living, we should be willing to be Spirit-led and not just Spirit-filled. Amen? We should be willing to be Spirit-led and not just Spirit-filled. Write this down. When you are led by the Spirit, you will be in the same direction and same pace with Jesus. When you are led by the Spirit, you will be in the same direction and same pace with Jesus. A lot of times we are worried, am I going in the right direction? If you allow the Holy Spirit to just speak into your life and be led by the Spirit, being led by the Spirit is that we practice integrity no matter where we are. We have a godly character. We don't put on a show when you're in church or when you're outside church. No, 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 no. We don't do that. We got to be the same wherever we are. Our attitude got to be the same wherever we are. We practice excellence wherever we are. And we got to have a moral courage, a moral standard. And we should be empowered by the Holy Spirit to do that. Amen? Otherwise, you'll be tired. You'll be running on empty. We should be willing to be spirit-led and not just spirit-filled. Amen? Being spiritful is so nice and gives you this cozy, you know, feeling that, ah, oh, I'm in the arms of God. I can speak, you know, uh, the, uh, I can speak in tongues for more than 10 hours. I can just be praying and doing all sorts of things. But then spirit-led is, yes, that is one side of the coin, but spirit-led is you got to go out practicing what you received in the presence of God and start living it out no matter where you are, you know, in, in your life, wherever, wherever you are at, in your business, in your marriage, at your workplace, in your college, wherever you are at, it got to be one version of you, which is God's version. God can only bless the real you. He cannot bless the fake you. And if you're going to keep asking God like, Lord, bless me, Lord, bless me, He's going to ask you, which one do you want me to bless? Amen. He wants you to, which one he wants you to bless? He, does he want you to, does you, uh, do you want him to bless the version that you are in college? Or the version that you are in home? Or the version that you are in church? Or the version that you are in workplace? Or the version that, no, that you are when no one sees you? When you are on your own? He's like, which one do you want me to pick? But it's going to have to come to a point when we are filled by the Spirit and led by the Spirit, all these versions should come together. Amen? And we got to become one person no matter where we are. And that's the only way you can stop draining yourself and stop running on empty and be full tank all the time. How many of you want that in your life? Amen? How to keep your tank full. Number one, go to Jesus. Number two, give up control. Number three, be filled by the Spirit and be led by the Spirit. What areas of your life you are running empty in? You've got to ask yourself this question. Decide what you need to pause and decide when you need to go to Jesus. Can you be both Spirit-filled and both Spirit-led?